you're going to prove that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. That is, if the limit as x goes to a of f of x is a and is l, and the limit as x also goes to a of g of x is m, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x plus g of x is just l plus m. And like always, we prove these things using definitions. The limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l, that's the same as given any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta one such that the difference between f of x and l, the natural value is always less than epsilon, whenever zero is less than the actual value of x minus a, which is less than delta. And possibly we'll need the following. I'm going to play games with that. That means that f of x minus l is in between negative epsilon and epsilon, adding l to both sides. This is the same as f of x is in between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. Whenever this is true. So, we have that definition. This, whoops, this one right here. I'm going to write up a similar one for n. I'm going to write up a similar one for n. The limit as x goes to a of g of x equals m. Well, this means that, whoops, means Given any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta two such that the difference between the function and the limit in absolute values is less than epsilon. Whenever zero is less than x minus a in absolute values, which is less than delta two. And likewise, this statement right here is the same as m minus epsilon is a less than g, g of x, which is less than m plus x. So we have this. Now, smaller delta is also less. I want to find a delta that works for both of them. So it, I think this should be obvious. You choose this delta to be the least of the two. We know it works for smaller ones. So if it turns out that delta 2 is bigger, I can replace it with delta 1. Likewise, if delta 1 was a bigger one, I can replace it with delta 2. Now we can replace it with the smaller one. Okay, so we have given epsilon greater than 0. We have that L minus epsilon is less than F of X. This is less than F of X, which is in turn less than L plus epsilon, whenever zero is less than x minus a, which is now less than the smaller one. And we also have m minus epsilon is less than g of x, which is less than m plus epsilon. Whenever zero is less than now, epsilon can be any number. 
you know what? I want to use epsilon over 2. I want to use epsilon over 2. Okay? Now I add L plus M minus epsilon. So L plus M, oops, didn't mean that. L plus N minus epsilon is less than the sum in the middle f of x plus g of x, which is less than on the right side, L plus m plus epsilon. When this is true, because it was true in both cases. So, you know, just carry that down. But now this is the same, let's see, take, so let me just put brackets around this. Now, f of x plus g of x is one function. Well, you can think of it as one function. You add two functions, you get one function. Now, taking L plus M away, and L plus M is one number. You add two numbers, you get one. So, taking away L plus M from both sides, we get negative epsilon is less than oops, is less than f of x plus g of x, which we're going to think of as one function minus one number is less than epsilon. Whenever zero is less than x minus a, etc. But this statement right here is the same as since f of x since this mess, I don't care what it looks like. Since this mess is between negative epsilon and positive epsilon, that means that this mess, let's write it down, that means that this mess in absolute value is less than epsilon whenever that's true. But that's the definition of the limit as x goes to a of that function equals that value. But this is the same as the limit as x goes to a of this one function. I think it think of it as one function right now equals to that one number. Now we can think of it as separate. Now, remember, so let's write this down in a little bit more detail. So, I have the limit as x goes to a of f of x plus g of x. And we just proved that it equals to l plus m. But this is just another way of writing l. The limit as x goes to a of f of x. That's l. Plus m. Oh, that's the limit as x goes to a of g of x. That is, you can distribute the limit. Now, let's go back and see if I could change something. What if I put a minus here? And I put a minus here. Okay? Now, everything here is true because I didn't change the two definitions. So this is true. And look what's going on. And this is true. And I choose delta to be the min. And I get here. I get right here. This time, hmm. Can subtract. This is strange. I can subtract because yes, I'll get L minus M, but when you now both of these are the same. So when you subtract it, you're gonna get this. Okay. So I have a way out of this. We know that the limit as x goes to a 
of g of x is l. Or m. So now, multiplying both sides by negative 1, I know that the limit of a product is a product of the limits. It is negative 1 times g of x. That, so let me write it slightly different. The limit as x goes to a of negative g of x, well, that's the limit as x goes to a of negative 1 times g of x is the limit of all that. But the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So it's the limit as x goes to a of negative 1 times the limit as x goes to a of g of x. Now, as x changes, as x gets closer and closer to 1, neg I mean to as x gets closer and closer to a, negative 1 doesn't change. It's called the constant. Times this limit, we were told is n. So I get negative n. Okay. So now, hmm. so now let's see what we can do here. What can we do? Now we prove the limit of the sum the sum of the limits. So the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus g of x. Oh my, there's a difference there. I don't even know how to prove the limit of sums. So you make it what you want it to be. I can always, always change subtraction to addition as long as I change the sign of the second number. So, I get the limit of f of x plus negative g of x. Ah, I have my sum. So now, I can take the limit of the first. The limit is x goes to a of f of x plus the limit as x goes to a of negative g of x, and this first limit is l, plus this second limit is negative m, so I get l minus m. More importantly, where are we? More, okay, so right here. More importantly, I show that um, I show that this limit is equal to L minus M. But L is the limit as X goes to A of F of X minus and M is the limit as X goes to A of G of X. Ooh, we can distribute the limit over subtraction as well as addition.